Welcome everybody. My name is Nico Weber and I'm a PhD student at the department EE Advanced Technology at Opel Vauxhall Group PSA. Thank you for joining me for today's presentation evaluating the question which scenarios need to be tested to ensure automated driving safety and why. So first of all, we have to answer the fundamental question why vehicles equipped with level 2 systems are already introduced in the market while level 3 systems remain outside. The central difference is that a level 3 system takes over the performance of the whole dynamic driving task while the automated driving function is engaged. This means that in addition to the lateral and longitudinal vehicle motion control, the object and event detection and response is covered in a predefined operational design domain. This leads to a need of validation and a safety proof of both. The vehicle and the intended functionality of the automated driving system within its ODD. Compared to level 2 systems, where the proof of safety is covered in line with the ISO 26262 by the factor of controllability by the driver, as a result there is a rise in both, the task quantity and the task quality. The dimensions of the rising safeguarding efforts are immense. If one applied the existing safeguarding methods like the statistical distance-based proof of safety for the use case of a highway chauffeur, one would need approximately 6 billion test kilometers under representative conditions prior to market launch. For comparison, this equals 40 times the distance between Earth and Sun and at the Opel Test Center in Dudenhofen, around 200 million test kilometers were driven since 1966 by all the physical prototypes, so about one thirtieth of the required distance. Due to this reason, new methods for assuring safety are subject to ongoing research. One of these new methods is the so-called scenario-based approach. The underlying assumption is that a majority of the scenarios appearing in real driving are not critical and hence testing them will not lead to further insight. Through considering only relevant scenarios, the effort of testing can be reduced. However, this testing effort is still larger than the capacities in practice. For instance, the functional scenario cut-in would lead to around 10 to the 23rd concrete scenarios if applying a full factorial test. Due to this, there is a need of research regarding further parameter-based reduction, which was done in this work. After motivating the scope of this research and the challenges associated, I will continue with presenting the possible path towards a part of a solution by walking through the applied methodology and the scientific results. Afterwards, a conclusion will be drawn and I will provide an implication for further research. The starting point of this research was the methodology for the simulation-based automated identification of critical scenarios developed at Opel, as shown on the right-hand side. The core of this methodology is a coupled traffic and vehicle dynamic simulation, which was capable of evaluating manually defined concrete scenarios so an explicit configuration of influence parameters on their criticality. However, to achieve a sophisticated safety argumentation, it is central to reach a systematic transformations of functional scenarios, like for example the cut-in scenario, into concrete scenarios. These concrete scenarios then serve as input for the coupled simulation. At the same time, a reduction of the parameter space needs to be achieved. The developed methodology is split in four process steps, including the definition of relevant functional scenarios, the identification of potential influence parameters, the analysis of these influence parameters, as well as the definition of concrete scenarios. For the different steps along the process, the possible inputs and techniques to solve the corresponding step are shown inside the gray boxes. In the scope of this work, the tools inside the framed boxes have been used. On the basis of the identified influence parameters, these parameters are evaluated statistically 
through a traffic simulation within Eclipse Sumo. On the basis of the received occurrence probabilities and the range of values of the specified influence parameters, a discretization can be conducted. The discretized influence parameters function as an input for the method of functional decomposition. This method is subject to the underlying assumption that specific influence parameters are only relevant for specific functional layers of an AD function. Through layer-wise testing, a reduction of the parameter space relative to a system test can be achieved. Afterwards follows a deterministic parameter variation of the influence parameters such that the in this way defined concrete scenarios can be passed onto the coupled in-house simulation framework Axiom, where a dynamic coupling of Sumo and IPG CarMaker takes place. Before presenting the results, I would like to stress that the results should be interpreted against the background of an automated driving function for traffic jam situations, the so-called traffic jam chauffeur. The first exemplary functional scenario investigated within this work is the cut-in scenario, as this scenario is a worst-case scenario within the ODD of the traffic jam chauffeur. The upper graphic shows a schematic representation of this scenario. The lower graphic shows the corresponding representation within Eclipse Sumo. For this scenario, 22 potential influence parameters were identified, as indicated shortly by the shown structure. The second exemplary investigated functional scenario is the so-called traffic jam dissolution. This scenario addresses the takeover process, which in itself is an important aspect by means of the ability to control the vehicle. During this scenario, the eco vehicle finds itself in a situation in which the traffic jam is currently dissolving. The vehicle ahead accelerates in speed and the automated driving function approach its functional boundaries and requests the driver to take over. Further results are focused on the cut-in scenario. With the goal in mind to find the occurrence probabilities and value range of the identified influence parameters, the implementation and calibration of parameters in a traffic simulation had to happen. The traffic simulation should be able to simulate traffic jam situations on highways to generate sophisticated synthetic data. The result of this implementation is shown in the table in this slide. As road network, the motorway junction Frankfurt as open trifle was chosen, within which an analysis of road segments of in some 3.7 kilometers was possible. Within the traffic simulation, passenger cars, trucks, as well as motorcycles were included. The demand of the different vehicles was based on traffic counting conducted by the bus. Within each group of traffic participants, 10,000 different parametrizations were realized. The parameter distribution of exemplary common characteristics like vehicle length or tolerated time gap is assumed to be normally distributed. The representation of different environmental conditions lies out of sumo scope. The visualization of different levels of detail within the traffic simulation initially shows on the left hand side the presence of a traffic jam situation by visual verification on a macroscopic level. The right hand side of the visualization illustrates that on a microscopic level individual vehicle movement is realized. The dynamic coupling between Zumo and CarMaker opens doors for further scientific relevant investigations. For example, there is the possibility to spawn and assess the behavior of sophisticated AD agents in complex traffic conditions like indicated on the lower picture on the right hand side. In addition, impacts of mixed traffic, for example on safety or comfort metrics, can be evaluated. Furthermore, one can replace the digital twin of the vehicle in CarMaker through a physical prototype and conduct hybrid reality scenarios on the test field. With the aim to quantify the initially subjective plausible traffic conditions generated by the traffic simulation, 
the synthetic data is compared to real data from actual traffic. The plausibilization using the macroscopic traffic metrics flow, density and average speed form the basis for credible frequency distributions of individual influence parameters. Due to the fact that the functional specification is limited to traffic congestion-like situations below 60 kph, with respect to the left-hand figure it becomes clear that both the area of stop and go traffic as well as the majority of synchronized traffic are relevant traffic conditions. The figure on the right-hand side, where the numbering represents time sequential conditions of a traffic jam recorded in real traffic, serves as reference for the plausibilization of the data gathered by the traffic simulation. Graphical representation of the traffic conditions generated by the simulation as a fundamental diagram confirms the impression of representativeness in the observed case. When taking a look at the data of reference, this first impression is strengthened. Even though there exists an offset between simulation and real data, but the difference can be explained by purposely chosen low average speed within the simulation and the before mentioned functional specification. Position and scatter of the simulation show a high level of correlation with real data. The instances of free traffic flow within the simulation are present due to the fact that around 300 seconds pass until a macroscopic stationary traffic jam status is reached. The respective periods have been filtered from the dataset in the following interpretations. The further presentation of the results is exemplary by means of the cut-in distance, defined by Zumo as the distance between front and rear bumper of the evolved vehicles at the moment of cutting between the x-axis and the lane marking of the cutting vehicle. On the right-hand side, you can see the corresponding histogram, including position and dispersion measures. By looking at the histograms of the various different influence parameters, it becomes clear that a forecast based on expert knowledge seems to be extremely challenging. The approach of discretization of this work contents the kernel density estimation of the quantum function. The main goal is the transformation of value continuous parameters in discrete parameter values as shown in the graphic on the right hand side displaying the cut-in distance. Through an equidistant division of the cumulative probability, it is possible to realize a variable discretization in the absolute value range of these influence parameters. It is shown for two exemplary classes whose amount of cumulative probability is equal, but whose class width differentiates by a factor of greater than 20 due to the developed approach. After concluded discretization, the next step is to apply the method of functional decomposition. The graphic displays the reduction factor of the parameter space in form of the ratio between system and particular test over the test coverage. For the exemplary drawn functional scenarios, a reduction factor of 45 could be reached for freewise and a reduction factor of 30 was achieved for 10 wise test coverage. This factor rises even more when taking into account a higher number of functional scenarios. Looking at the dimension of the remaining test suite, it becomes clear that a challenge remains for the application in practice. The very last step within the methodology for the definition of concrete scenarios consists of the implementation of a deterministic parameter variation. This last step was implemented within the scope of this research on the basis of the before defined class widths in the absolute value range of the corresponding influence parameter. Within each class, the median was used to specify the parameter values used for the creation of the test suite for each influence parameter. The aggregate of these influence parameters over all relevant functional scenarios defines the test suite which is then handed to the coupled simulation framework in order to evaluate the corresponding criticality, for example, as open scenario file. To summarize, thanks to the developed methodology, a quantifiable reduction effect of the parameter space by a factor of between 30 and 45 
depending on the test coverage, is achieved. Additionally, through the limitation of the value range of the different influence parameters, a second non-quantifiable effect of reduction is realized. Moreover, the developed methodology fulfills the requirement of a systematic derivation of concrete scenarios. In the case of the cut-in scenario, the potential of the simulation-based approach is enhanced as there exists a time-saving factor of about 2000 compared to real driving under conservative assumptions. Looking at future extensions of this work, the ambition is to enlarge the number of functional scenarios under consideration. Furthermore, deeper examination on model validity and its influence on the microscopic traffic conditions have to be conducted. Other than that, the question whether apart from the occurrence probability there exists other factors coining the relevance of a scenario. An example could be the potential severity cost. Moreover, a benefit analysis of hybrid reality approaches like the before-mentioned prototype-in-the-loop approach should be conducted. And at the end, the investigation of the applicability of the methodology in urban areas seems to be quite interesting and relevant for future. Now, there's nothing left to say than thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and don't hesitate to contact me in case of questions or comments.